Hi, this is Melinda, and I am so happy to be here with you all today. I'm sorry that we couldn't all be together in person, but we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing right now and um, staying home and staying safe. So I'm very glad that we're getting to have this opportunity to be together. So welcome to our hair and makeup and nail session. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about what is beauty um, and, and what do we think about when we talk about beauty? Is it just our hair and our nails and our makeup? Um, but one thing that we always want to remember is that beauty isn't about trying to be somebody else or something else. Beauty is about enhancing what you have, all of the beauty that's in you. Um, so that's not trying to, to recreate yourself, it's just to enhance the very best of ourselves that we have. And so one of the first things that I always think about when we talk about beauty and um, how we look and how we present is posture. And that's kind of an old fashioned thing that we think about. And sometimes you might have seen pictures in books of um, girls walking around with a book on their head to try to make their posture better. And now these days we don't have big heavy books like that. So I would not advise walking around with your laptop on your head. Don't do that. But um, one way we can think about our posture is just sitting up. So let's all try to do that right now. Just take a deep breath and kind of feel like you have a string that's running along your back. And put your shoulders back and sit up straight. And when we sit straight like this, and when we try to remember to stand up straight when we're walking, a lot of things happen. Um, it makes us feel better. It gives us a, a more positive view of things. It makes us look thinner when we're worried about, about um, you know, looking slimmer. It helps with that. And it also helps with back pain. Um, if you're at school all day or now that we're doing so much on our computers when we're doing everything virtually, so often you know, we're looking at our screen and we're, we're bent over and you might start to have some back pain. And so if we can remember to stop every once in a while, just lean back, take a deep breath, let your shoulders drop, you will instantly just feel you know, a little better and, and just a, a little bit more grounded and mindful. So as I said, beauty can be a lot of different things. But they did a study one time where they showed people lots of different pictures of people and asked you know, what, what those individuals uh, thought of beauty and how each of those people in the pictures looked. And what they found was it wasn't that the people had a lot of makeup on or that their hair was done really fancy. What the, the people that were determined to be the most beautiful were the people that were interpreted to be healthy. So that is really, really important. When we want to put forward beauty from ourselves, we want to be healthy. And so here's some things in my toolkit that I just want to remind you. Exercise. Exercising is very important. And these are just little weights that I use sometimes if I'm sitting around at the computer or on TV or watching TV, I can use these weights and um, getting up and walking. Walking is the very, very best exercise. You don't have to have a treadmill. You don't have to have a gym membership. Just get out and walk, you know, every once in a while. You know, because we are home a lot and it is hard to remember to get up and move. But exercise is really important. Eating right. It is so important to eat right. And it's so easy right now to have all of those chips and everything when we're at home. But in my toolkit, I always want to have lots of fresh fruit and lots of vegetables because all the vitamins in this really, really help our skin and help us to, to look fresher and, and beautiful. Sleep. Sleep is so important. And sometimes now when our schedules are off a little bit, we may be taking naps during the day or we may be sleeping in because we don't have to go to school. But sleep is very, very important. I don't really use a sleep mask when I sleep, but uh, some people do. And it, it marks all that light out that you might get from some of your electronics when you're sleeping at night. So getting a good eight hours of sleep and it really, really helps your skin. And then this is the most important thing that I have in my toolbox. If nothing else, 
water, lots and lots of water. Water is so good for you and it's so healthy and so much better than all the colas that we like to drink. I, I like to drink my cola too. But when we drink lots of water, so much happens to, to help us be stronger and more fit. And it really shows on our face when we're drinking lots and lots of water and um, our cells fill up and our, our skin plumps up. And if we have you know, problems with our skin, it can help our skin be clearer. It flushes everything out of our systems. So if you're trying to lose weight, you know, our cells really, really like water and our cells like to hold on to something. So if they're holding on to, to the junk and you give them fresh water, they'll release that and they'll, they'll like the water because our cells like water. That's a really, really good thing. Best thing to have in your beauty toolkit is drink as much water as you can. The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about are things that we shouldn't put into our bodies. And the one thing that we know is when we are um, using substances that we shouldn't, um, drugs and, and unhealthy things that we put in our body, it shows. It shows in, in how we look. Um, it, it will show in our hair. When we use different drugs, illegal drugs that we shouldn't use, our hair can become dull and it loses its shine, it becomes brittle. And if you're trying to grow your hair out long, that means it's going to break off because it's, um, the cells are filled with those bad things that your hair doesn't want to have that you're getting from your food and your water. Um, another thing that using drugs can, can do for us isn't, that isn't good is um, our mouths. You know, if you've ever been by somebody that you thought was really pretty or really good looking and then they come up and they talk to you and their breath is really bad, they don't look as so good to you anymore when you have to say, oh, you know, and, and using drugs can do that. It takes away the saliva in our mouths. It can make our mouths very dry. It can make our teeth decay, which can all lead to bad breath, which is something that, that none of us want to have. And so no matter how good we look, you know, if people want to stay away from us, that's not good either. And as far as your, um, your skin and your nails, they can't grow when they're not giving good substances. Just like your hair, your nails will get brittle and dry when your body's having things inside that it doesn't like, because our bodies weren't meant to, to produce and get better and, and um, be beautiful on things that, that we shouldn't take into our bodies. So we always want to remember to, to to be healthy, we have to, to put everything healthy in our bodies and stay away from those things that aren't as healthy for us. So today we're gonna to talk about a few things and it's gonna be very, very simple, but we're gonna talk about some skincare and then just a, a few tips about hair and then um, we'll do a little bit with our nails. And I, those of you that um, are in this session with us, you have a few things in, you know, that you can use to follow along. So you're welcome to follow along. You're welcome to follow along with things that you have at home or just watch. And then just remember to sit up and watch and follow along and we'll get going. So when we're, well, I always like to kind of start with a, a very clean palette when we're talking about our faces. And so you always want to remember to keep your face very clean and to wash your skin, um, usually twice a day. We don't want to over scrub our skin because if our skin is oily or where we start over washing or over scrubbing, it, we can actually make it worse because our skin wants to have natural oils. And if we're constantly stripping those away, then our skin says, oh, wait a minute, that's all gone. I want to produce more. So if we're having little blemishes or problems with our skin, um, you know, don't overwash. Just wash with a good clean soap, you know, twice a day when you get up and before you go to bed. Um, and that will help keep your skin very, very healthy. So I'm going to use this. I like these little um, claws that you can get that have makeup remover on them. And a secret that I like about this, if you spill makeup remover on the kitchen or on the, the bathroom counter or on your carpet, these things are great. They'll help take off those little spills that you get sometimes. So I'm just going to remove anything that I might have on my face to start with. Okay, and then something very, very important, a moisturizer with sunscreen. And I know you are all young and cute and pretty and you think, oh, I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about that sun. 
but that sun will catch up with you, especially in the hot summer days like this. We always want to use a moisturizer with, that has a sunscreen in it, you know, good strong sunscreen every day when you go outside some type of moisturizer, even if you don't use anything else on your skin. Always use a sunscreen with moisturizer. And it doesn't have to be an expensive moisturizer. You will see things advertised on your computer and on TV and uh, very costly creams and everything for wrinkles and to brighten your skin. And it does not have to be expensive. My doctor told me that this was the, the best thing that I could get and I get it from Walmart. And it's just um, just a very nice little light moisturizer that I can use with the sunscreen. It has the, the big word on it, hyaluronic acid, I believe is how you say it. But it's a big word, but um, it's a, it will keep your skin all soft. It has lots of good sunscreen in it. Okay, and you want to get around your eyes because sometimes as, as you get a little older, you're not there yet, but it's always good to keep moisturizer around your eyes when you can because this skin is really delicate here. And that's where you'll see sometimes when you start to, to get some of those little lines around your face that you don't have to worry about yet. So we have our moisturizer and don't forget your neck and this area because it also will get, um, this area here can also get very, very dry and get a lot of sun damage. So make sure that you cover all of this area. So then what I like to do, and this is completely up to you and how you feel. Um, sometimes if, some, if you have skin that you feel like you want to smooth out, um, you can use a little bit of a makeup base. And again, I don't use real expensive makeup bases. I don't go to the expensive stores. I go to Walmart. I've always, I always get my makeup, all my makeup from the dollar store or Walmart. Um, and then and you can just smooth it out. And you don't need to do this step at all if it's, um, you know, if moisturizer is enough for you and you don't want to, to smooth out your skin any, you don't have to. But you can put on a little bit just to kind of even out. Sometimes my cheeks get very, very red. I have a little bit of what they call rosacea. Um, and some, some of you might have that sometimes, like if I'm out where it's very hot, or sometimes if I eat spicy food, um, I, my cheeks will get redder. And so I like to have just a little bit of color. Now, what I would like for you to remember is that we're not trying to change our skin color. We're not trying to, to um, make ourselves necessarily look more tan. We want to go with a color that's really close to our natural skin because we're enhancing our natural beauty and, um, and everything about us because you are all so pretty and wonderful and we, we just want to enhance that. Now for some of you, you know, we're getting into that age where we might have a little bit of blemishes. Sometimes we like to cover that up if we're going out somewhere. And again, you know, just I use a little cover up. And it's just from the dollar store. And I like to put it under, maybe if you have circles, maybe if you didn't quite get enough sleep that night before, like we talked about. Sometimes I need to cover up a little bit of the wrinkles. You know, if we have little blemishes, we can touch that up. And I like to use sometimes a, a color that's a little bit lighter than the, the color that you might have used on the rest of your face, and then just kind of blend that in. And just a tip that I use sometimes is I'll put my concealer or my highlighter on my eyelids too, and that will help brighten things up when I get ready to put on my eyeshadow. And, you don't have to have a separate makeup or buy a separate product. You know, you'll hear to put a primer on on your eyelids. You can just use what you have. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have all the different products that you see on TV to, to do this. You can just pat it on with your fingers. Some people like to put their makeup on with a brush or with a sponge. Sometimes you'll see people use sponges that can kind of smooth things out. But I find that my fingers are the best. They make everything just very nice and smooth and they're great little tools. Just make sure, as you know, we're all washing our hands. So if you're gonna have your hands on your face, make sure that you've washed really well your hands before you do that. 
Now, I kind of like to work from the top down. So, eyebrows are a thing. It seems everybody has a different view on eyebrows. Some people like their eyebrows very thick, and some people tweeze all of their eyebrows to very thin and draw them back in again. Whatever you, you like or whatever you think looks best on you is great. And I just like to take a little brush. You can even use like a toothbrush if you have a clean toothbrush. Sometimes you get an extra toothbrush from the dentist. And you can just kind of brush up your eyebrows a little bit and shape them like this. Just kind of up and over. And if you do like to tweeze your eyebrows, what we like to try to do is always kind of start our eyebrow here with our tweezing and then take a, a little line up here and stop your eyebrow about there. And that kind of gives you the shape that you might want to do your eyebrows. And whatever shape and length and size, they're beautiful. So, um, the next thing that we want to talk about is some eyeshadow. And I know you all have a, a, a mascara and an eyeshadow palette in your packets that you got if you're joining us today. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we can do that with our eyes. Now one thing, when we're all going back to school this year, we only have to probably do half of our makeup, right? Because we're going to all be wearing masks. So we can kind of concentrate a little bit more on our eyes because that's what every, everyone's going to see up above us when we have our masks on, our pretty eyes. So I have this palette here. Again, it's not expensive. It's something that you can get at Walmart or the dollar store. It has you know, several different colors in it. And you can use your finger. You can use a brush. I just have some old brushes here, not anything fancy. And I like to first use a lighter color, like maybe one of the lighter colors in your palette. And you're going to kind of take that and blend it all across your eye. All across your eyelid, just like that. And then take some over here all across the lid, just like that. And you can just blend it in. Just blend it in, blend it in. We don't want it to be real dark. We're just, we're just enhancing what we have and adding a little color. So if you'd like to blend too, I want to poke my eye with my fingernail, but if your fingernails aren't as long, it's a little bit easier. And you can just blend it in. Blending is really the key. So just you know, blend it in and make it smooth. And then what I like to do is one of your really dark colors here. You can use a Q-tip or I have this little brush that you can use that is a little line. And so you don't have to have like a lot of eyeliners or pencils. I mean, if you have an eyeliner or pencil, that's great. But you don't have to have a, a separate tool. You can just use your darkest shadow here and just go along the eye lashes right on top and you don't have to, to put a lot but you could just just put a little dark and jump it up and down and jump it up and down just like that just right along the line and if you, you'd like to do a little bit on the bottom you can do the same thing so it doesn't take a whole lot of, of extra tools or supplies it's just all the same in your palette with the darker color just go back up on the top, just do just a little bit, bounce up down. It'll put just enough color there to enhance your eyelashes without making it look like you have really dark, dark lines around your eye. And some people like that look. Some people like to use a lot of, of dark eyeliner and maybe if you're going out for a special occasion, you might want to have it a little bit darker around your eyes like that. But for today, we're just enhancing our natural beauty and what we have. So then I take the lighter color, this lighter color here, and I just start at the inside of the eye and go about halfway in and just keep blending it. And then I go up and out up and out and just take that lighter color on the inside, up and out, 
both eyes. So I'm just trying to, to highlight your brow bone up here and brighten up that inside corner of your eyes. So we're gonna make our eyes look nice and bright over our masks. And then what I also like to do sometimes then um, if I'm trying to make my eyes look bigger and brighter, which you might want to do if you're um, going out somewhere, I like to go back in and take one of my darker colors again and just put right here, right on the edge of this bone here on the outside and then blend. And then I'll take it up from the corner here and I'll just blend and I'll add just a little bit of darkness here and then blend with my finger, always going up, always going up this way. And that will bring your eyes up and give you that lift that you like to have on the corner of your eye. Boom. Getting a little dark there. And then we'll do the other eye. And it's just a little bit, just a little bit of color there on the brow bone. And then Pull up the corner and just fill it in. And use your finger and just do all that nice blending. It's all about blending. The more we blend and we make all the colors kind of come up nice and bright. See, we don't want to have any harsh lines. We're just blending all of our colors in. Just taking that line up nice and high from the corner of your eye. Just blend. Boop. That's all it takes. And if, you want, if you're going out for a really special occasion, you might want to use some sparkly colors on your eyelid or on the inside of your eye. It's completely up to you. But the important thing to remember is less is more. We always want to enhance. Not to, we're not trying to paint a whole new picture. We're just enhancing what we have that makes us all naturally beautiful. So you have some mascara in your kits and mascara is, is gonna be a great tool for you um, with our masks this year because mascara will really help our eyes to pop a lot. So with your mascara, I always like to start kind of on the outer side and I go back and forth just a little bit. I try to get the brush as close to the base of the eyelashes as I can to try to help them lift up. And then I go back and forth a little bit to try to get all of the eyelashes covered right at the base because that'll help us our eyes look brighter. And then we'll do the other eye. This one's always a little tricky because you have to cross over and then just do the same thing. Just, just don't poke yourself in the eye. Just get as close to the eyelash bottom as you can. Go back and forth a little bit and then pull out. There you go. And then sometimes I like to go back with the tip like this and just kind of enhance right on the edge. And that'll give us that nice cute eyelash over our masks. Okay, very good. Some people like to do their bottom lashes. So, um, that's completely up to you if you like the look. Some people do a little bit of the bottom lash just out in the corner just to help brighten up those eyes. So moving on down our face, the next thing I like to do is if you have um, a little bit of bronzer or blush to just you know, kind of put a little bit right here, not too much. We don't want to, to look like we're over painting, but we might want to put, if we, especially if we've used some base, if you haven't used any base, your, your natural rosy cheeks will be right there and you might not even need to do this. But if you've used some base, just below your cheekbone, just very lightly, and again, just up, just pull it up. It doesn't take very much. We're just giving ourselves a nice glow. We don't want to look overdone. 
And I know sometimes you might watch some videos and you might see people on TV do a lot of things. They call it baking or you might have heard the word contouring and someone will show you all different um, shades of a base and a powder and putting makeup on and wait, letting it sit and then adding something else. And many times when they're doing this, they're saying, well, we're going to reshape our nose. We're going to make our nose look different because we're going to put a highlight here. And then that's not what we want to do. Our, our noses, the nose that you have is beautiful. And we don't, um, we're, it's not our intent to try to recreate our beautiful nose. We just need to enhance it. So you don't need all of those extra supplies and all that extra contouring. Love what you have because you're beautiful exactly the way you are. So, you know, like I said, it's just a few tools from the dollar store can just help us look a little bit brighter and feel a little bit more confident. But you don't have to have an, a complete toolbox to make yourself look beautiful. So moving on down the face, we'll put on a little bit. Some people like a dark color. Some people just like a clear lip gloss. It doesn't have to be a lot, but I like to put just a little bit of lipstick or lip gloss on my lips. Just follow your natural lip just the way it is. Now sometimes some people like to make their lips look a little bit bigger than the lips that they have. Um, kind of we like to have a little bit pouty when we're taking our selfies. And so you can go down a little bit, just a little bit down below where your lip is if you like to give yourself a little bit of that pouty look for, for your Instagram selfie. But not a lot. Again, remember we are enhancing the beauty that we already have. And then if you want to put a little lip gloss on top of it for a little shine, if you're going out or you're going for the dance, I'm really going to miss the dance this year, seeing all of you all um, dancing. And that was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to, to when we can all dance together again. But if you want to be a little bit dressy. Now, when we're going back to school this year, or when we're going out and we have all of this stuff on our lips, remember that we're going to have to be wearing these masks. So you may not want to put a whole lot of lipstick that might smear off on your mask because then you don't want to, it'll be smearing across your face as you have to get up and move around your building or if you're out somewhere. So this might not be the best of times to put a whole lot of lipstick or lip gloss unless you know you're going to be home and safe and not um, wearing your mask. You just might want to skip that um, for right now during this time if they need heavy on your lips. So the next thing I want to talk a little bit is about your hair. Um, it, there's always styles about hair. Um, I, there t there's a time when everybody's wearing big high you know, styles and there's times when the hair is very very straight and we use all of these tools and we're trying to straighten our hair and, and make our hair something that looks like you know, whatever the style is. And one thing that I really like about right now in our world is that the style is what you have. If you have curly hair, that's the style. If you have straight hair, that's the style. We want to enhance and beautify what we have and, and let the world know this is our style. I didn't know that my hair was this curly for a very long time because I was just, I would get out of the shower and I would dry it all straight and I didn't know that I could do this much curl with my hair. You know, it wasn't for a long time till I realized that if I, you know, moisturized and took care of my hair, I had a lot of, of natural curl. And I didn't have to use a curling iron to get all of that curl in because it was all there and ready um, to, all there ready for me. I just had to enhance it. So a couple things to remember. If you have very, very curly hair, you probably, when you wash your hair, need to use a little bit more conditioner or moisturizer in your hair because curly hair is very, can be very dry and it will break off. If you have very straight hair, a lot of times that hair, the natural oils um, in your hair are good um, and come all the way down the shaft and you may not want to use as much moisturizer. 
when you're doing your hair if it's straight. So pay attention to kind of what your hair needs and um, work with your own beautiful hair. And so I was going to show you a little tip today that I um, like to do that's so easy. And if you have very short hair, this might not work as well for you. But if you have hair, you know, that's, that's medium hair or longer hair, um, this is what I do in the summer with my hair. Or if I'm in a hurry to get to work or get somewhere, or even if I'm going out for a very nice, um, you know, dinner or, or going to the dance. Uh, easy, very, very easy way to put up your hair. You'll see a lot of things on TV where they will talk about and have you know special tools and special clips, and you don't need that. You can just get the you know this is from Walmart or the dollar store. It's a bigger clip, a little clip. And what I've always done is if I have a lot of thick hair, I'll just pull this piece out. You can just pull it out. If your hair is thinner, you might want to leave this piece in. And I just kind of bend this out and make a little bit more room. And you can just you know, find these clips around your house or whatever, wherever you have them. And it's very easy to do. You just pull your hair up like this, just like you would in a ponytail. But then what I do is just twist it. You just make a twist, very easy like this. And then I just take this clip and I slide it right underneath all that hair and I just make sure I've grabbed the hair underneath and I've grabbed that little twist and you find the end of the clip, lock it down, and there it is. And you say, oh, that looks funny. You have this funny thing on your head. Well, you can just, if your hair is curly like this, you can just bring it down and sometimes I'll put a little water on my hair like this with a little spray bottle or just put some water under the sink and I scrunch it all up and voila, you didn't need any of that fancy thing that they show you on TV that gives you all of the, the stuff around your bun. It's there and it stays up and if you want to be a little fancier, you can pull it, pull hair down in front. If your hair is straight, just after you get it into the bun here, just take your comb, pull it out and you get a nice little, nice little ponytail in back. And it's so quick, that was so quick and easy. And you can just do that to go to the dance, to go to school if you're running late. And super easy, didn't take any fancy tools or anything. So that's just my, my tip. I've been wearing my hair like this for 20 years. Very, very, probably longer than that. Very, very easy. Um, so one thing that a tip also that I would like to share with you is um, in the shower when you are putting conditioner on your hair if you comb the conditioner through with a comb like a big comb like this something with big teeth um, before you get out of the shower while your hair is still wet start at the bottom comb up and get all of that conditioner in all of throughout all of your hair you will notice a difference in how your hair um, is conditioned and soft because it's getting everywhere. And that's just an easy little cheap trick that you can do and you know, very, just takes another extra minute in the shower and it will make a big difference for your hair and your moisturizer. And remember, drink your water, lots of water. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is nails. And you all got a, a nail polish, I believe, in your kit. And so the, what we want to remember about our nails, again, is our nails reflect what we eat and how healthy we are. So we want to make sure that we're eating right, getting our necessary vitamins for our nails to grow strong and healthy. And some of us, and I will share this with you, I can be a nail biter. When I get nervous or I get busy, I tend to, I can bite my nails or I might bite my cuticles. I think a lot of us do that when we get nervous. And so that is something, especially now, when we're worried about being safe and about touching things, we want to try to keep our hands away from our mouths as much as possible. So there's some tricks that you can do. You know, if you want to uh, like put lotion, we always want to keep our hands soft. You know, put a lotion that doesn't taste very good on your hands regularly and try to you know, remember, you know, if, if your hands get up around your mouth that you want to keep your hands away from your face to be safe. Um, so if I um, 
I have my long nails. Uh, some of you may not have nails <laughs> quite this long, uh, but that is something that, that I like to do. I, I like to have, um, I like to go and have my nails done. That's one of the things that I do kind of special for myself every once in a while. So your nails might not be this long, but the, the um, way we take care of our nails is the same, if they're long or they're short. We just want to keep them healthy. So we want to um, always try to keep our cuticles pushed back with our nails. And there's um, a, a really great time and a way to do that. If you're after um, you get out of the shower or after you get done doing the dishes, if some of you do the dishes at home, just take the dish cloth or take your bath towel and just push your cuticles back um, a little bit when they're soft and in the water. And that will keep your cuticles nice and not tearing. When we try to push our cuticles back or we're doing a lot of things with our hands, if you're playing sports, it's easy to get those little tears in our cuticles. And then, then there's a tendency to maybe put our hands up by our mouths. And so we want to avoid that. We want to, to just keep our hands soft and nice, and our cuticles pushed back, and our nails just nice and trim and clean. So it's important that we keep, um, that we, when we do have a chance to wash our hands, that we clean out from under our nails too, because we want to make sure that we're not getting any dirt or germs that might get up under our nails. And then a trick with our nail polish is if you have a clear nail polish, sometimes you might want to put that on first. Um, but today we're just going to use the co our color polish. And I'll tell you a little trick on this. So I'm going to use this bright blue color so it'll show up on the camera. I think it's a very pretty color. It reminds me of like Alice in Wonderland's dress. It's very pretty. So a trick that, uh, that I always recommend is if when you are doing your nails to start with the hand that you don't use the most. So if you are right-handed, um, paint your right hand first with your left hand because that hand's going to be a little less steady and you might be more apt to bump that hand. But today, um, we're just going to do one hand today, so I'm going to go ahead and use my right hand um, to paint on my left hand. And sometimes there's a tendency when we're painting that we want to just go all over the nail and then you know it, it kind of gets up on the cuticle and then you're scraping at that or that you have to go back and forth and kind of scrape on the nail and in a different direction we get kind of streaks. So a trick to painting your nails when you're using the color is to try to do it in three strokes. It might take me a little bit more because my nails are, are longer than most people's, but if you can try to do it in three strokes, so go right up the middle and then go on either side, one side here and one side there. So I'm going to touch it up just a little bit because my nails are a little longer, but if you do it in three strokes and then just let it go. Because you're going to look at that and say, oh, you know, that's not dark enough. There's not enough color on that. You know, I, w I would like it to be a little darker or maybe I missed a spot. And then the, you're going to think or have a tendency to want to say, oh, let me just grab some more and go over it. But every time that you do that, while the nail is wet, you're just adding more streaks. So even if the nail isn't perfect the first time that we do that, so if we're doing the, the one down the middle and then on each side and it seems light, that's okay. We're going to let it be light because when it dries a little bit, we'll go back and, add and do this again. And that will make the color much darker and any spots that we might have missed, we'll be able to fill in without that tendency of getting too much or getting it all kind of um, gunky or bumping it when we're waiting for it to dry. And there is nothing that, is, that it seems to take longer in the world than waiting for your nails to dry. It takes a lot of patience to let your nails dry. But if we do this lighter coat and then let it dry and then go back after you know about two or three minutes and put on that second coat, or if you're very patient or you're watching TV and you can let it dry, let that first coat dry for five minutes. Then when you go back and you add the second coat, just do that again. Just 
once up the middle and once on each side and you will see that your nails will will dry much smoother and you won't have all of those issues um, it, but it is hard it is hard to sit and wait for your nails to dry so um, good luck with that um, and that's my suggestion for our nails so Thank you very, very much for being with us today. Um, we've talked a little bit about being healthy and um, it's just some tricks for uh, just enhancing our natural beauty. I want you to know that I think you are all very beautiful, all in your own way, whether your hair is curly or short or red, your eyes are blue or green, um, that does not matter. What matters is you and, and your own inner beauty and personality because you are all so special. So thank you for spending this time with me today. Um, I've had a wonderful time sharing with you. And I'm so looking forward to when we can all be back together again. Have a wonderful, wonderful camp experience and a great rest of your summer. Bye.